Hello, um, my name is Nelson Arblaster, um, and I've owned this space for about 18, 20 years, somewhere in there. I can't remember the exact year I got it. Um, I was uh, on eBay, this would have been 2000, probably three, I was married in 2002, uh, so it's probably somewhere around 2003, 2004. And uh, I was just looking for a 1970s vintage jazz bass. Um, been on there for months looking uh, and came across this one. And in the listing, it said that it was owned by Baker of the band Mad Season, which um, when I read that, I was like, what the heck? Because I'm a massive uh, Mad Season, Allison Chains fan, Pearl Jam fan. And, uh, anyway, I placed a bid, uh, got outbid. I didn't win it. Um, and the price really wasn't too bad. I was thinking, well, even if the story isn't true, the base is probably worth about that, uh, being what it was and all. Uh, and so I kind of figured, well, if I did win it, it's just like a bonus, you know, uh, which I couldn't believe. Um, anyway, I, about a week after the auction one was, was over, I got an email from the seller um, saying that the person who had the highest bid didn't actually win it or didn't pay up or something. Um, and so he offered it to me at the same price that the highest bidder got. Uh, he didn't really say why the highest bidder backed out, but apparently they backed out. Um, so I went ahead and did it, did the official transaction through eBay. Um, I did look through my eBay history. It doesn't go back that far, so I can't really get information on the seller. Um, if I was to contact eBay, I might be able to get some archived information about it or whatnot. Uh, I will say this. When it when it did arrive, and I had seen, the obviously, the Pinup Girl sticker on there, um, so I knew... I didn't think the story was not true. Um, but when it came, uh, I remember messaging the guy, just said, hey, what else can you tell me about this? You know, I can't believe this was owned by Baker or whatever. And he explained that he was Baker's roommate, uh, that, you know, he had overdosed, uh, which I had already known that, um, just being a fan. And uh, he said, by the way, there's some packs of strings in there you can have. There was like three or four packs of unused strings. Um, anyway, so... You know, I've had it this all this time, um, almost 20 years, uh, being a big fan and a bass player myself. You know, I've always taken care of it, cherished it, um, never thought I would sell it. I've had people approach me, uh, bass players who, you know, are big fans of the music. I've really learned how much people have been impacted by Baker and his playing, uh, Mad Season in general, uh, just his tone and his... Uh, kind of bluesy type of playing is really uh, stuck out for people who grew up, you know, loving 90s Seattle music. It was something a little different. Um, so anyway, to show you more of the bass itself. I mean, obviously the Pinup Girl sticker um, is definitely, a, you can match that up with, uh, you know, the footage you have of... Um, Live at the Moor, which is really what I did. When I ended up getting this, I was uh, looking at that stuff, especially this rehearsal stuff that you guys put out. Um, and it looks exactly like it. Um, I've looked for this pinup sticker on the internet, just wondering if they have it anywhere. I've never been able to find it. Uh, it is under the clear coat. Um, the finish itself, I'm thinking, is a refin. Um, just a lot of, like, kind of... I don't know if you can see that, a lot of like cracking and th things like that. So I'm thinking it was probably refinished maybe in the 80s, or early 90s, possibly before Baker got it. Uh, the pit guard, I've looked at the pit guard compared to footage, and it's hard to tell, but it looks the same. One of the giveaways is how much it's raised here. A lot of these kind of would shrink over time, these old 70s pit guards, and you can see it's bowed, and I can definitely get that reflection uh, when looking at some of the... Uh, backstage stuff. Uh, another giveaway is the uh, drop D tuner here, um, which uh, I think I've caught glimpses of that also. Um, what else? The other thing that I've also kind of picked up on that matched it up 
is a lot of these inlay blocks are really bright silver, but then this third one and this fifth one is not quite as shiny as the others. You can see they're kind of uh, duller looking, almost a pinkish kind of color. And looking at that uh, rehearsal footage of you guys playing uh, on the Moore CD, um, you can tell that these are kind of, in fact, not as bright in that as, uh, as well. Um, you know, I don't have a lot of money. I'm a school teacher. Um, this is probably the best playing jazz bass I've had. Uh, I do have a 2015, a brand new one, which is really nice. Um, but there's something about these 70 jazz basses. This one is so light. Uh, the tone is so nice. Um, the neck is perfect. I mean, it's just, it's still my favorite jazz bass to play and I've had several over the years. Um, some things to say, um, I did have a solder done on one of the pots here I brought into the shop. I'm trying to remember if this bridge, if I replaced it at some point. Um, I don't remember if Baker had a badass bridge or not. I'm thinking it's possible that he did. Um, but actually, I'm not even sure if that's true. I think he did have an original one because the holes, I think, have to be re-drilled for that. But for some reason, I think possibly the bridge had gotten replaced at some point. Um, other than that, it's what it is. I did, my kids did knock it over once and I got a ding in here. I brought it into my luthier and uh, he did was able to blend the paint uh, to where you can't tell. Uh, you can see there can't even see that it's there but you know my whole thing was it needs to stay the way that Baker had it um he did have chrome knobs I still have those um in a box um I still have those uh it's a wonderful base I've loved it cherished it for all this time um and then just kind of recently you know here I am I'm 46 years old I'm a school teacher I don't get out and play much this base. I mean, it's been sitting in my living room for like 10 years um, and uh, just doesn't get the use that it used to get. Sorry, that's my son. Um, so I've just kind of entertained, you know, maybe letting it go. Uh, I did post on uh, talk base, kind of a backstory on everything. Um, had a bunch of people like, hey, if you want to sell that, I, I'm a it, Madsy's impacted my life. I would love to have that. And the more I started thinking about it, the more I was like, if I'm going to consider selling this, I need to talk to Mike McCready and Barrett. Um, also, I watched your guys' interview that you had talking about Baker and just, you know, about his 1970s car and who he was. And I could just really tell you guys miss him a lot. And he's a good friend of yours. And so, um, you know, I'd like a fair price for it, but uh, more than anything, I'd like to kind of see it go back to uh, his friends. And I know this is like getting a piece of him back, um, piece, piece of his life. So um, what's crazy is one of the people on the talk base forum uh, said, hey, if you want to sell it, you let me know. I understand you want to, you know, offer it up to uh, Mike McCready and Barrett Martin. But um he said, I'm a bass player in Seattle. I, if I was to try to get hold of him because you've had trouble getting hold, why don't you uh, talk to, um, it was the bass shop in Seattle. And so I can't remember the name they gave me. I, I think it was, I'm not sure the name that they gave me, but I went ahead and called and one of the employees picked up and I real brief was like, hey, I've got this base. It was owned by Baker. And he was like, which one, you know? And so I told him and he said, uh, let me get your information. He uh, said, uh, I think I could probably get a hold of Mike uh, and maybe even Barrett. Anyway, he emailed me the next morning and said, uh, just wanted you to know my name's Jeff Rouse. I'm friends with those guys. I've played mad season shows with them and I've sung for them. And I was like, what, are you serious? Like I called this random shop in Seattle and you're like, you know, do like reunion, kind of a reunion show with them. Um, and that was just crazy. So he said he liked to help me out. Um, just kind of a crazy and small world that this is. So um, Mad Seasons impacted me hugely uh, just as a bass player, a kid growing up in the 90s and uh, just 
you know, learning to play Wake Up was like, you know, one of the first really awesome kind of bass lines I learned uh, that just sounds so good. Um, anyway, um, I thought, shoot, we'll plug it in. You guys can hear it. do some wake up. Anyway, um, you know, I would like a fair price. And when I say fair, I'm nothing crazy, you know, ridiculous. Um, you know, the prices on these just for, you know, an original from this era is pretty expensive. But uh, um, and just the opportunity to be able to get it back to you guys and, you know, not to do that um, in a cold kind of way, but in a personal kind of way. Like, I'm not expecting, you, you know, maybe to fly out here or whatever, but uh, anything that would make it kind of more personal or meaning meaningful to me even if it's just a photo with you or anything I don't what I don't know what's possible but um just a big fan and um it's just kind of fun to be able to do this so uh let me know thank you bye